All right. We're back. And, uh... Oh, I gotta put down my phone. I'm being yeah. exposed. Yeah, we fell through the sand. I'm busy sending stickers to you, Wooly. Oh, God, I didn't look. I yeah. didn't look. I made my best purchase in weeks. And you won't know till the end of the video, I God guess. damn it. I'm gonna sit on the edge of my seat for that. I was too, I was too busy getting lost in Black Box. Black Box is like God damn, the what a coolest fucking mobile good game. mobile game. <laughs> it's like not even a, uh, at a certain point it's not a game cuz you can't figure anything out. Yeah. And the stuff that comes to you is fleeting. No, I well, there's one thing well I'll, I'll talk a bit more about it next time I suppose on the podcast but yeah, yeah. I did learn one thing that helped me solve a fuck ton of the What was that? the, the mysteries. I don't want to spoil it. It's too good a game. And if I tell you that, yeah. it'll spoil it for a lot of people. Yeah, you're right. I might know. Um, here we go, we're back, and we fell through the quicksand, because plot X is weak, and canon- Plot, plot the entire party is weak. It sucks, because this is the guy that defeated Sigma how many times? Uh, so aren't we up to seven? At this point- No, are we up to eight at this at point? At this point, it's literally every time there's been a problem, this X has saved the world, because yeah. this is the last game, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't fucking know, but you can't deal. Is this the last Mega Man X game? Well, it's canon? it's it's, can it's canonically furthest in the future, I believe. So, so just th so this was the note everyone had to leave Mega Man X on, and you know, and it's just kind of like he couldn't deal with some quicksand and a whip, really. Nah, 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 not at all. Well, all right. He he, plot tripped and dropped all his gear down the gutter, so he can't take hits anymore. Um, he's like a weird boy, Samus. It's. <laughs> It's it's not great, but uh, yeah, I learned a couple things as as per all of these recording sessions have been for sure um, Gonna oh, yeah, uh, I uh, I learned that those those four dogs that we faced in the desert earlier uh -huh. Are gonna be our meal ticket to getting some serious force metal generated. Oh, yeah generation Yeah, lots of FME from them because they are uh, super exploitable to get like tons and tons of um Tons of damage uh, uh, using Axel's, uh, an ability that I'm going to get off of Axel okay. soon. So basically, you get that ability, you go to them, you use it, get them into the orange part of their health bar, and, and devastate and them. And go nuts yeah, uh, yeah. and whatnot. I learned about like how to specifically get um, Massimo to do like over 10k damage, which will give us his... This one easy trick to make Massimo do 10,000 damage. That gives you his fifth bar, I guess? It gives us his fourth bar, exactly. Um, oh, fourth, yeah, yeah. The DOA status? Yay! Oh god. Oh god, that fucking art of bad box art. Yeah, uh, that Norosuko drew. Yeah, I god love that. God damn, Norosuko, you champion. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, the, uh, whatchamacallit? The, uh, what was I, what was I in the middle of discussing? I was, I was saying, <laughs> um, uh, make do over 10,000 damage with, with Massimo. One then, easy trick. Right, there's that. There's the fact that I'm going to, uh, try to um I put the accuracy up on on Axel so that I can possibly try and land all those shots that kept missing. Right. Right? That makes sense. That might be a thing. Uh Can you get 16? Did you learn one easy trick to get 16 hits with zero? It's really hard. It's not going to happen anytime it's, soon. It seems incredibly difficult. Yeah, it's not going to uh, happen anytime soon. The, I will get it at some point. The one time you had the gauge full, I think you did what 13 or 14 or something and that was that was pushing it, so... Yeah, I... Uh... And I put the generator on her to see if I can possibly, uh... Get something out of that. Okay. X... Fuck this attack! It takes so this fucking long. This attack sucks. It's not a great... Aren't there usually three of them, though? Or am I... Yeah, there actually were last time. Uh, I guess they shortened it because they realized the game was going on a bit. Um... Yeah, you know what? Uh, X is really weak, weak right now. I wanna, I want someone that'll get me through this nice and quick. Sure. So I'm just gonna go some damage fuckers. Uh, why not? Yeah, but what was the, there was there was a, a couple of things that that that, that uh, people wrote in and gave me some tips on. So I mean, I'm gonna try to make use of all that all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, but my understanding is that this uh dungeon is a little bit long. Uh, a little bit puzzle heavy. Okay, cool. We're really good at those. <laughs> Historically, our puzzle success rate has been a hundred percent. So, you all, know, all we have to do is our like, puzzle speed is very bad, but our success rate is perfect. Let's just keep keep our eyes on the prize and not 
not yeah. wander off too far, and exactly. we should be able to solve it no problem. Like, see what color the axe is. Yeah, what's over there? The pickaxes. This is a red switch. What does it do? Press it? Yeah. yeah, why not? You've just extended the puzzle by an hour. Oh. Okay. So the game has taught us... <laughs> right there. Yes. That pressing a switch... Yes. ...opens a portion of a door, or uh -huh. e maybe equivalent, but I haven't learned that yet. We have, we, but we have learned... We have learned... ...from what we saw. And Pre that press a button, open a, op a, a lock, a, a single a, one. Yeah. It wouldn't be reliable to to assume that it could open a full thing at all, or that it could open up anything else. But this we've is, learned that. Yes, this is uh, how you educate through gameplay. Yes, exactly. Very smart. <laughs> Most players would miss that. <laughs> so. She's gonna. If you're if you're not as inside as we are, mm. you mm. might not see how right. pressing that switch taught you that those are good things to hit and that it would open the door. If you weren't as if you hadn't, you know, we uh, me and Wooly worked in the industry for a few years. And oh if, yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. If we would you know. Hadn't been through the trenches like that, you wouldn't know <laughs> that that that's a teaching tool. It's it's kind of like how you know when you see Mega Man X on the on the on the first screen yeah, yeah, charging yeah. up that shot. Uh, it, it's like that. It teaches you that it you press the you, button you, to you. shoot. Yeah, and, and here and really they they could have done better there because they could have put a text box on the screen that told you um, pressing a switch. Yeah, or, or well, or rather that uh, pressing the 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 was it the X button or the Y button shoots your gun. Ah. Um, and they could have also tied that in in-universe and had uh, Roll call you. Uh -huh. um, and then that would have been an even more effective uh, teaching, teaching tool. mechanism. Teaching tool, I know yeah. some players get past that first bridge without pressing the shoot button. Um, and that's a problem. And that's just... that's It's not that's problem. fantastic no, design. No, exactly. It's not perfect. You want your player to be educated. I've been playing uh, Pokemon Sun. And I'm about... How do they handle it? I'm about three hours in, and I think I'm still in tutorial land. So I've been being educated really? very, very thoroughly, very well. Okay. I, that, that, see, so that's a that's, blue switch. That's, a, that's blue, a blue... Single blue switch. Probably a blue switch, switch will do that. What do you, but um, we don't... Mm, I wouldn't... We don't know. No, no, no. We don't know don't for sure. make We shouldn't assumptions. assume things. Don't do it. And I'm glad the Pokemon games no longer let me assume things... Cause you know, have, you, have you played Sun and Moon yet? I have not. I have not. Early in the game, one of the, one of your first things you got to do, uh, that's kind of a lie because it's about two hours into the game, but one of the early things you do is they put you through a Pokemon learning school. Okay. They make you fight four characters in the school. Okay. And they don't act like normal trainers where they see you and then they fight you. You have to talk to them. So that puts you in a situation where you start talking to everyone in the school and you start having to press through text boxes of people telling you things because you don't know who you're supposed to fight or not. Oh boy. Um, which is an effective teaching, <laughs> which we're looping around now, uh, but, which is an effective teaching mechanism because it effectively forces you to talk to people and talk through dialogue that you didn't need to in earlier games hmm. because theming. I'm sure some people can parse through that and see what I was trying to say, but... It's Pokemon, man. It's Pokemon, man. Like, what do you... I, I was actually wondering to myself, and it, it might be nothing, but I, I kind of want to go try to find some blind LPs of uh, of people's first Pokemon game. Okay. Um, As they try to figure out what's what's even happening. Yeah, well, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward, right, Pokemon? So I, and I kind of just want to see how far people get in their first Pokemon game in three hours. Because I want to see what the comparison metric is, right? Because I'm three hours in, and I just... I'm, like, uh, during the first major trial of the game. And I, I haven't... I've been kind of cutting through grass, so I don't have to fight too many wild Pokemon. But I've been fighting every trainer along the way. So I, I haven't been, like... And I haven't been mashing through stuff. I've, it, it took me three hours to get there. So I'm kind of curious to see in, like, older Pokemon games where you'd be in three hours. Doesn't that mainly come down to, like, reading speed and shit? And, I like... Think, I think part of it Like, your battling sure. ability is... You know what I mean? Like, even if you're better, yeah. you're gonna save yourself a couple turns, but... Yeah, exactly. 
the, the, I, the encounter rate is the encounter I'm, rate. I'm you curious know? to see on the whole what the comparison is. Like, I'm really, really enjoying Sun. Yeah. Um, but, like, I can't help but feel three hours in. Like, I'm like, I get it. Got it. I, I learned the lessons. Right, right, right. You know, so, um, you know. And I mean, certainly, you know, in the case of this game, there's some stuff we absolutely didn't really pick up on on our own, like the, uh, the shot and combat distinction between the two types of skills. Flying enemies can't really be hit. By yeah, the, skills, yeah. I right? mean, I mean, not to not to say that that wasn't there explained. Up, up, oh, oh, up, up. Not to say that that wasn't explained, but we were just in the middle of like LP. Yeah, it was. It was probably explained, and, and just, we missed it. Yeah. But it was so brief that it wasn't. It didn't hold us up. You know, right? Um, and there's there is a help menu that is there too. Yeah, know, and so. we just never bothered to look at it. But like, that's I'd prefer that because if either of us were playing it for funsies, we would take the time to look at it. You know, but like, <sighs> I see. I, I I prefer knowing the manuals there rather than having the game tell you. You know, and right. like Xenoblade Chronicles X, I felt like I was uh, I felt like I was attending class for uh, for a while in the game. I really liked it, but it takes like, a while for that to takes a while. To sink in, eh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the um, the fourth Mario and Luigi, the first 3DS one as well, Dream Team, was like five hour tutorial land as well. Um, oh, by the someone said Heat Haze um, Super is actually more damage in the end than 100. Oh, awesome. uh, so I was okay. I, I okay, was the wrong cool. per, I was just the wrong enemy perhaps. Okay. Same. Also, DOA status I learned about. Remember that last time we right, were like, yeah, what is you that? You were saying that before. Yeah, before we got to dead or alive status. Um, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's death. Yeah. yeah okay. But we don't know what percentage of a chance it'll hit. It'll but be. It, it just but kills. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's good to know. So I put the axle um, accuracy thing on, and we saw that. What is the switch gonna do? I I don't know. I'm not. What's it gonna do? Something somewhere X can't Should tell. Should unlock that. There we go. So yeah, the uh, it, you saw how like it, it landed. Wow, single shot. Big 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 text. Yeah. Uh, it actually doesn't. Oh, that, oh wait, it seems like there's just items behind. The exactly. Door, so yeah. Go. So uh, I'm gonna go back that way then. Yeah. But uh, no, the 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 axle gun. Um, <sighs> the accuracy, like it, it didn't, still didn't do a ton of damage. You know? Okay, yeah. So uh, this must not be progress. This must it, just be. It some doesn't items. look like it. It just looks like four items, but. We can't tell yet, because the door didn't get to open. <laughs> it appeared on the map very briefly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So what do I want to do with you? I want to do one of these. See if I can get the gold one, actually. Yeah, may as well. Just focus on it, right? Is that one gold, or was it just a yellow? Uh, the, it's, it's a, it's a, the gold Metor is up top, uh, up top there, I think. Or is it? Yeah, I don't know if it's gold. It, it's... Similarly colored, but I think that's just a yellow. I can't. T I think it's just a yellow Metor, but let's. Metor Commander. Metor Commander, yeah, it's a regular no. one. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. okay. Um, yeah. I am liking Pokemon Sun, though. It's a huge step forward. Really, really inventive and fresh. Like. And it's. And, and uh, it, it. Does it. Like, the. Is it pretty much visually the same as X and Y? No, it's a level. It's a level. It's just they above. stepped it up, eh? It's a, this is. Yeah, this is a huge step up. This is a lot more in line with. They didn't uh, remodel every Pokemon though, did they? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, possibly. Okay. Uh, I saw that that Waylord doing uh, Darkest yeah, doing Lariat, Lariat yeah. and it looked like the same battle engine updated for that stupid shit. But M maybe I, I it's been a few years since X and Y, and I did not play Omega Ruby Alpha, Alpha Sapphire. So okay, maybe they remodeled them. I can't remember. And I'm not far enough that I've seen, like, tons of older Pokemon that I saw in X and Y either, so... But, uh, I, I am quite enjoying it. Um, it reminds me of, uh, Colosseum and XD, actually, a lot. Because it feels more like a... Like, it feels a lot more like a JRPG than necessarily a Pokemon game, you know? Like, it feels a lot like a Pokemon game, don't get me wrong. I've seen a couple people mentioning that, actually. Yeah, and I, th I think a large part of that is, like, the presentation. Having like uh, uh having like proper cutscenes of camera and angles and, and you know uh, a story that seems like it's actually gonna go somewhere, uh, which I think Black and White was the last time there was a, a new Pokemon game with a story going somewhere. Not counting Omega Ruby, of course, because that's that was a remake. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that's cool. It's that's good. cool. It, it, it feels good, and I'm, I'm excited to get past Tutorial Land in it, because, uh, you want to go, no, wrong way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then and left then here again. The corner here. Left, nope. 
Up. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm having a good time with it. Did you buy it at all, or? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Um. I'm going to. So yeah, I, I don't believe I have the move yet that they're saying. I need. I need some kind of. Uh, Etano Circus Missile Barrage. Okay, just a specific one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, well, they couldn't the have been being, talking just... about this, because this is a bunch of punches. Yeah, that seems wrong. But apparently it puts them all into into the exact critical range, and then you just get free fucking... Dang, yeah, yeah. Well, then you instantly kill them. First yeah. turn, pretty well, much. And then, what, and then what you do is you take Mega Man and put him in his, in his hyper form. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, you put... And then you let him wail on the on one for as long as possible and you get like crazy stupid damage right, off of that and then you unlock you know the the requirements for i think it's do over do over whatever k tandy though f 10 or 15k you know in one shot yeah um i was i want to ask you a bit more because uh again like since you know you haven't done a ton of uh mega man yeah but you have done look, correct me if i'm wrong all of the battle networks right uh, the only one I haven't played extensively, and you would think I had, but it was the first one. Uh, I... Huh. Yeah. You, you skipped. I more or less missed the first one, and a friend of mine, a really close friend of mine, um, best friend in high school, had Mega Man Battle Network 2, and at some point I borrowed it from him, and I loved it. I just adored that game. Um, and I... I for, mainly for the gameplay or for the setting? Uh, a bit of both. A bit of both, but the the gameplay is really good. I don't know if you remember the combat system in Battle Network, but it's really on point. Uh, I do remember the combat system. The 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 nine by nine grid on both sides. Yeah, it's it's uh, three by three. Yeah. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, no, it's all good. Um, it the combat's incredibly on point in Battle Network, so I, I fell in love with that. And I played I played three a good bit. Uh, it wasn't until four where I started really, really getting into it. Ironically, four is uh, even I know this. It's the worst one in the series, and there's like very plain faults with it. Four is um, its whole structure is it's just a big battle tournament. Oh, so you're okay. just going through a big like RPG tournament. Yeah, I, I I liked it a lot, and that was where I got really serious about it. Uh, and like me and my friends were really competitive in high school uh, with Battle Network, and. Um, yeah, I, so, but I've, I've, I've played all of them except for uh, Operation Shooting Star, which is the secret seventh one that only came out in Japan, and uh, I haven't finished the first one. I'd like to go so, back to it because I think it's on the Virtual Console though. Because the, the the Battle Network games, like, I, like, yeah, you like you're, say, you're saying now that there's four of them. Like my brain, there's six. Plus, plus a secret seventh one in Japan. Like I, I can't like when you. I can't believe there were that many before they switched up to Star, Star Force. Force. Like I had no idea yeah. when I stopped paying attention. And Star Force, that they was, went on that fucking long. Yeah, Star Force was neither here nor there. It was not Battle Network, and it was. But how many of those did were there? I think there was only three. Um, only three. Only a trilogy. I think there was only three, but there were there were two versions of each one. Uh, unlike Battle Network, oh. where the two version thing, this should be a red one red lock but battle network was one version until it got to um uh three now did so did they, they started out of the gates with higher expectations what was the main change system wise between the um star force and not star no no not star force between um the the this main the the main exe between games between each battle network yeah because was it just like the original series where when you go from one main mega man game to another you just you're replacing the bosses in the stages yeah 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 so, but you're basically getting the same mega man maybe he'll slide this time yeah so i mean yeah. obviously like a big part of it was they could just keep adding more battle chips right which were the cards in the game basically yeah, yeah. um and so they could just keep adding those right the first game uh, that's the one I know the least about and remember the least about. It was pretty much just the battle chips, and you'd you'd uh, when you'd beat Net Navvies and get their battle chips, um, they were like summons kind of, and they were really cool and satisfying to use, right? Okay. Um, I don't remember when it was introduced. It might have been four, but it also could have been three. I really can't remember. Uh, it's been so long. But at some point, they introduced a system where you could uh, transform Mega Man into like that Net Navvies. Uh, into a version of Mega Man based on that NetNavi, and he'd get a different costume. Um, and he always had, because it was two buttons, right, A and B, his B button was his buster, always. Okay. Uh, but when you're transformed, it would be specific to that uh, that NetNavi, right? So if you were Tomahawk Man, you'd get his Tomahawk instead of your buster. So you got different, like, battle forms for Mega Man that would dramatically change, like, your deck composition. 
Um, because you get, like, Tomahawk Man's Tomahawk, which was the equivalent of, like, having a beam sword. Uh, so you'd want to compose your deck to be more, like, taking territory from the opponent to force them within sword range and stuff like that. Um, so that was, that was a big change up. And then at Mega Man Battle Network... 6? I think? Uh, they introduced, um... Well, at 5, they introduced these territory battles, where you'd, like go around these little custom maps, taking over parts of the map against other, like, against the foes, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in 6, they introduced sounds like two... Sounds like Assassin's Creed-style quality of life upgrades. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was more quality of life stuff and, like, than, than it was, like, major system rethinkings. Uh, and in 6, they introduced the, um, the two, like... Title. Like, I don't know if you've seen the box art for six, but it's these two big creatures, right? Uh, Falzar and no, I, Gregor I, I, or something I like can, that. I know what the first game's box looks like. And... It's like it's like these two legendary Pokemon, yeah, okay. more or less, right? They introduced those, and those were these like super transformations that Mega Man EXE could do, yeah. uh, in addition to the like regular NetNavi transformations. But yeah, it was mostly um, smaller, like iterative improvements rather than like rethinking the, the whole gameplay okay. loop or anything because i mean that, that, that but it that, was good to the end six is a high point in the series because yeah like like i said like most Mega Man games in general you're just you're just getting boss and and tile set changes for the most part that's it but yeah. the gameplay is simple and fine you know you're not expecting much more but like as an rpg series that's exactly what you're getting right yeah. go breath of fire one to breath of fire six yeah and what the fuck are you getting like or, i, I or, wish rather, there was a breath of fire 6. no 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 breath of fire Four was where they stopped. Four, and then you got Dragon Quarter. Okay. A, a lot of people didn't like Dragon Quarter, but it it, it totally counts. It absolutely does. Um, I yeah, think Dragon uh, Quarter is cool. I was gonna say like, what was? Yeah, the, those games changed relatively dramatically. Like they kind of figured out the art style in. Uh, I mean, you can see between two and three where like the art style is really solidifying, and then four kind of kept the same art style. Floor as three. is blue, uh, four is blue haired elf guy, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's Ryu and all of them, yeah. Ryu, uh, well, mm, no, I'm, not, I'm I'm thinking of something else, but because uh, he has blue hair, it's the blue haired guy, is Ryu, but okay, because black black hair on the cover of the first game and the with the yeah, but that's fake. The American cover, oh, God, it's not, can, okay, it's uh, not, it's not uh, real. Okay, okay, that's like uh, that's shitty Americanization cover. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll try to like. I I only got through the intro of of one and two. Really, I never really sunk a ton of time in. Yeah, they're. Uh, I, I one, one was my jam. That was that was like the first RPG that I played thoroughly into completion as a kid. I really really liked that game. The encounter rate in, in two, just even in the beginning, oh, was it's wild. Really, like I, it was a, it was bothering yeah. me. Yeah, no SNES it RPGs was fucking bothering me. But I didn't get that problem with like Lufia, for example. Like I thought that was cool, and, and of course I always. Luffy is neat. I've never really gotten into Luffy. I'm biased really cool. towards games where you can see enemies on the map as well. I yeah, really, I know, I know really you really appreciate that. Yeah. that a lot. So um, here's this is Breath of Fire on the Super Nintendo. Uh, yeah, that's North the box. American red hair, boxer. red this black hair so, guy, red shirt. So um, actually, yeah. that's I accidentally clicked on Breath of Fire too. Um, but anyway, yeah, black haired Ryu. Um, and then, like, the characters are in the background. You can see Karn and Blur, and, like, they're all there. This is actually the, the first Breath of Fire box art. Oh, yes. Um, okay, right. He has very dark, black-looking hair, but it's oh, it, Breath of Fire 2 is where his hair looks genuinely black. Um, and then you go to fucking... Is Breath of Fire just called Breath of Fire in Japan? I think I, it I, is. I don't know. I've never even, like, looked into or heard about what it would be called in Japan. Yeah, I've, I have no clue. Uh, yeah, it is Breath of Fire. Um, you look at the Breath of Fire Japanese box art, where's Ryu on the box? Oh, not even there. He's not even there, and okay. it, it's, it's implied that he's the dragon, because that's his thing, is he can turn into dragons, right? Um, but, like, much more, like, anime box art style. Yeah, and, and, um, and again, I guess the, the the cover of 4 is the one that I always saw, yeah. where I'm like, this is a... Capcom. Get your Kinu on the box. Full on anime. Well, the the Breath of Fire on GBA is like Nishimura, Nishimura, Nishimura mm, to mm. the end, and it looks really nice, and it's a lot more reflective of where the series are. We should do a went. box art review. Oh wait, that would be like ten minutes it or would, less. I think it would still be fun because there were a lot of remakes, uh, and they all have unique box art. Four was the one that never. Yeah, four was nice. This one with the with Ryu with his sword and stuff. That's that the was, one that I'm thinking of. That's yeah. real. This hot. plays terribly for a let's play. Liam. Yeah, but I'm expecting people to like follow along or for you to edit in the box art 
<laughs> in post <laughs> motherfucker all right um, challenge accepted uh, yeah i'd love to do a box art review of breath of fire that'd be really fun um even you're right it wouldn't be it wouldn't be extensive that's no mega man like it's like no fucking barely mega man 10 box minutes art long ah uh, more than that there's there's like there's a lot of stupid like americanization shit to talk about mega man got that too we're like mega man's box art got fucking ruined um, I just want to say, so, I'll, yeah, like, I'll keep the eagle eye on him, because why not? I have the free, yeah, uh, the free erosion, but I don't like, uh, yeah, his, his eagle eye, not his eagle eye, sorry, his auto bullets are just not, they're not doing it for me. Yeah. And, um, probably gonna just stay off of that and stick to spells with him, so. I think that's about right, though, because that seems like it's his only real strength. Yeah, yeah, so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna, um, get rid of... The little switch up. I'm gonna uh, take the Hawkeye off. Uh, I'm gonna put the generator back on him. Yeah. Okay. And uh, go back to our original setup. Do we not still have spare generators? No, we only. No, have we only have one generator. Okay, okay. God, if we had more. They all got used. That'd be. Yeah. A, that'd be. Yeah. No. 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 That'd be great. But uh, yeah, that's turbo not what we're Okay. And uh, that's what he'll. That's what we'll do. So. Um, yeah, no, I, I, you're blowing my mind that that's the same character, actually. I'm fucking... I, I'll, it's not the same guy. Like, it's a different Ryu every time. Like, Link? Oh! It's a different Ryu every time. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, um, okay. Now that I think about it, actually, it might be this... I can't remember. A two is the one I, I remember the least well, which is a shame, because I've always wanted to really um, get back into two, because I played it when I was young on the GBA, which was a bad uh, localization of it. Um, yeah. It might be the same one in one and two, but I, I honestly, I don't think so. Uh, but it's a different guy each time, as far as I remember. Like, this is this is the five guys. Right. Okay. Um, but uh, but all but just all that to say that like an RPG going from one to six goes through vast vast changes. Yeah. But then again, that's also assuming it changes consoles over the years. Whereas yeah. all the Mega Man uh, transitions, uh, tr transmission, never yeah. transmission. What never. exe? Fuck it. Exe's yeah, yeah. cool. They were all on the TVA, <laughs> except for Operation Shooting, Shooting Star, the, right. se the secret DS one. I actually did forget one significant thing in in uh, Battle Network that was a huge improvement. And it was in Battle Network 3, um, they added a system called NaviCust, right? Which is because they didn't have enough characters, but it was it's basically customize your Navi, right? Okay. So these oh, were... Those were good numbers uh, for yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. By the way. Uh, these were, it was the equivalent of equipping uh, gear to Mega Man uh, besides his uh, battle chips, right? Okay. So you had this little grid, not unlike the equipment system in uh, Resident Evil 4, or the inventory system. Mm -hmm. And you had these, like, blocks um, that you had to, like, fit in it, right? And, like, this block would be HP plus 50. This block would be, like... Attache case. Yeah, this block would be buster damage plus whatever. But instead of being, like, this is all you can hold, what it was is how many can you fit in. Oh, you can fine. hold as many as you want in, I the, in love your those inventory list. Man. Yeah, so... Uh, this was uh, is one of my favorite upgrade systems ever, I think, because you would just slot them in as well as you could, and that you'd get benefits for having them there, right? Um, and and it the grid I think started out as like four by three or something, and as you'd go through the game, it would it would get bigger as you get it upgraded. And the big gimmick uh, was there was two different types of blocks. There were ones where uh, they're like tetrominoes, by the way. But tetrominoes, they, they, yeah. Okay. But they would occasionally have like out there shapes that tetrominoes don't have. Like they'd be bigger or smaller than that. Okay. But f just to give you an idea, so there would be blocks that are like tetrominoes in that each segment is just a square. Yeah. And then there were blocks where each segment had a cross on it, right? Um, and the distinction between these was the ones with the cross could go anywhere in the thing, but the ones that were just a square had to touch this line. There was a an execute line in oh, okay. in the Navicus thing. And the ones that were just squares, like regular tetrominoes, had to touch that, and the ones that were blocks could not touch that line. Um, so you not only would you have to put them in, but you'd have to fit them together in such a way that they worked around this line. That, that sounds like it has it. the potential to get incredibly complex. It was really neat. And I mean, if they wanted it to, but it's for kids, so they're not going to. Yeah, ultimately, you're just moving tetrominoes around, so like it's not too hard to like brute force what you want to get in there. But as a kid, it was pretty, pretty incredible and deep. Uh, hold on a second. 
build hypers. I remember plus I, one to max hyper. Yeah, and I remember the advice was like, who do you uh, want to give that? To? Giving it to the like X and Marino benefit heavily from these. Marino, yeah, can Marino gets it because she, she can gets, just like, take up the whole screen. She gets like eight turns so. where you can use items and do whatever you want and stuff. Yeah. So uh, that could be an interesting thing to do. Um, we don't use her that much, but it might be a fun way to play. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, we can just give we can give X some hyper turns as well and have him be a beast. Very strong. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I think we're gonna play with X more. Yeah, put it on. I, I say put it on X. We're gonna get more, and we'll pass one yeah. to Marino next time. Or something. Everything else is fucking cinnamon time. Yeah. Um, exactly. Okay. No, but I heard what you're saying about that system. Yeah. Okay. I just googled it just so we can check. Uh, Breath of Fire. Uh, here's a bit in Wikipedia. The series is notable for its recurring characters and ambiguous continuity. Ah. Uh, though each game is its own self-contained story, which is what I thought. Uh, the names of the two lead characters are always Ryu and always Nina. Always Ryu. Okay. And and Nina. The, okay. the girl with the wings. Yeah, exactly.